Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're gonna be solving a Physics 7C practice problem on the topic of optics, more specifically Snell's law. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like, it really helps our channel. So this is the problem that we're gonna be working on today. No picture this time. So Blangenium, however you pronounce it, is an unusual material that exhibits extreme anomalous dispersion in the visible range. The dispersion is such that for rays incident on air blanginium boundary at 45 degrees, blue light refracts at 30 degrees, while red light uh, refracts at 25 degrees. If Fanny shines a mixture of uh, blue and red at a normal incidence on a block of pure blanginium that is 10 centimeters thick, how much longer than the blue photons does it take the red photons to travel through the block? Okay, so as you can see, I have uh, the instructions written over here. So I wrote like the basic info and these equations the quiz uh, is giving us at the bottom of the page. Uh, you know, as usual, the uh, blank PDF version of this quiz is, uh, you can find it in the description. So if you, if you want to print it out and then just work it there, great. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and say that uh, you like there is no real reason why you should draw a picture for this problem if you know what you're doing and usually I wouldn't however um, I wouldn't because on a quiz you know time you know runs out so you want to be fast however I think that we I mean if you're using this channel you're using it because you're learning how to do this so I think that uh, for that reason because we're learning that we are actually gonna draw a picture for this so I have a little, you know, space here for our picture. And basically, so this is what happens in terms of the anomaly. So blue light refracts at 30 degrees. So let's just... Um, so both are incident at 45 degrees. So I'm just going to make this 45 degrees and I also need a red one so if you do this at 45 degrees for both of them then what happens is that the blue one refracts at 30 so I'm going to exaggerate these angles just to, you know, emphasize the, the anomaly. So these are going to be uh, very exaggerated. You're just going to have to be mindful about that. So 30. Let's just say that this is 30. But red is 25. So again, very exaggerated angles just to show the difference. So red refracts at 25. So, so even though both of them enter at the same angle, one of them diffracts at, uh, one of them refracts, refracts, I'm sorry, at 30 and the other one at 25. Uh, so this basically means that uh, the index of refraction of blue light on blanginium is not the same as the index of refraction of red light in blanginium. Because if these numbers were the same, then according to Snell's law, there would be no reason for this separation. This separation on the instructions basically is telling us that uh, when it comes to blanginium, we need to be sure that we're working with the right index of refraction uh, for the color that we are using, because it's going to be different. So the first step would basically mean uh, to find these two, I would say. And then we're gonna go into the, you know, the entire velocity, how much longer thing that the problem is asking us. But the first step that we have to do is find uh, these two numbers, because we're gonna need them for the uh, second part of the problem, which is like the, the thing that we have to find. So 
let's just find these guys. So I'm just gonna do red. I'm just gonna do blue with blue and then red with red marker. So for blue, Uh, N1 is air for both of them. And then the angle of incidence is 45 again for both of them. And this is blue on blanginium, but I'm not, I'm just gonna say it's blue. And then blue refracts at 30, right? Yeah, blue is 30. So N for blue. is equal to sine, no, sine of 45 divided by sine of 30. So sine of 45 degrees divided by sine of 30. So for blue, we have 1.41. Now I'm gonna do the same for red, except well, first of all, I'm gonna use a red marker. Second of all, I'm gonna to try to find N red. So I have to use the info for red. So N1 The left side is the same because again, same incidence, same index. But now I have to use the angle for red, which is 25. So N for red color is sine of 45 divided by sine of uh, 25. And that is equal to 1.67. This is the index of refraction. Um, now this essentially means that red light is gonna be slower than blue light because again, uh, just by looking at this uh, definition, which was on the quiz, I just copied it, the higher the index of refraction, the slower your velocity. So now that we found this, we have to go into the, the second part of the problem, which is that when the girl, what's her name, Fanny, Fanny shines a mixture of both of them at a normal incidence, so zero degrees. So in this second experiment, she shines both rays. So we can just do it over here. At normal incidence, which means that normal incidence means that this line and the uh, perpendicular line are the same, so your incidence angle is equal to zero. On a pure block of blanginium that is 10 centimeters thick, so this is 0 0.1 meters. How much longer than the blue photons does it take the red photons to travel to, through the block? Okay. So both of the trajectories for these guys are gonna be the same. Both of them are gonna enter perpendicular and they are gonna exit this interface perpendicular. And this is gonna be the case for both of them. They're gonna be perfectly perpendicular. Why? Well, if you look at Snell's law, your incident angle is equal to zero. Sine of zero is equal to zero. So if your incidence angle is equal to zero, this entire thing is zero, which means that this side has to be zero. N2 is not equal to zero because N2 you know, is equal to either of these. So N, N is a number that is never zero. So because this number is not zero, this sign has to be zero, which means that our refracted rays have to be zero for both of them. And that is just applying Snell's law. If you hit the surface at a perfectly 
90 degree angle with the uh, with the surface, which would make your incident angle zero, then by direct application of Snell's law, your refracted is also zero, which means that it just goes straight. So both of them are gonna have the same trajectory, which is straight. The only difference is that this one will be slower than the blue one, which will be faster. So both of them will have the same trajectory, but blue will hit here first. And basically we wanna see what the difference is between this hitting this edge and uh, red hitting this edge. That is the delta T that we're looking for. So how do we do this? And this is why the picture is so important because it like really helps you visualize what you're doing. So now we actually have to uh, go ahead and uh, figure it out, right? But this is basically the setup of the uh, problem. Blue is gonna hit here first, but you know, how much faster? So uh, the way to go here is remember our definition of velocity. Uh, most, well, more than velocity, I would say our uh, physics 7b or maybe even high school uh, definition of velocity, which is distance divided by time. So, distance divided by time, which is our high school definition of velocity, our 7b definition of velocity, just the very basic uh, definition of velocity. And what we are going to do is split this. So here, we are trying to find the time that it takes for the blue light to start here and end here, right? So that's the time that we're trying to find. Because if we find this t and we find this t, then we just subtract them and then we find delta t, right? So we're basically trying to find this time. So solving for time. Time is just goes this side, so it's distance divided by velocity. Like this. So uh, distance is 0 0.1 meters. And then velocity, I don't really know. Well, I'm just going to leave it as V like this, because I don't really know what the velocity is. However, I do have on my quiz, my equation that relates uh, index of refraction, speed of light and velocity. So my, well, I'm just gonna write it as it is C over V. This basically means that velocity is C over N. So my velocity is equal to the speed of light, so 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by n. Uh, blue marker, so I'm doing blue, 1.41. So my velocity for blue, let's see, so clear, clear, 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 1.41, that is equal to 2.12 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right, because I have this number though. Um, meters per second, so now that I have this number, I just have to like finish this. So my actual time would be 0 0.1 divided by velocity. So I'm just gonna do 0 0.1 divided by answer. And this is equal to 4.7 times 10, negative 10 seconds, which makes sense. I mean, it's going to be super fast. This is just 10 centimeters. Uh, so this is the time for blue. 
Now I have to do exactly the same, but now I'm gonna do it for red. So for red, again, this is just the same. Time is still equal to distance divided by velocity. The distance is the same. This is the same uh, cube of Blanginium. So 0 0.1 divided by velocity, but now velocity is the velocity of red. So same equation. Same speed of light. Only difference is this number. So for red, we had 1.67. So this velocity is six seven one point seven nine times ten to the eight and then zero point one divided by answer my time for red is equal to five point fifty. 6 times 10, negative 10 seconds. So blue is faster, that's good because that is exactly what we were expecting, so that's great. And so now for the difference in time, so we just do difference in time, it's just time, um, what does it say exactly? How much longer than the blue photons does it take? Okay, so if we want how much longer, then we're doing uh, blue minus red. So my final answer, blue minus red, so it's, uh, oh no, it's how much longer, so it's uh, red minus blue, I'm sorry. Okay, so how much longer, how much longer, red, blue, sorry about that. Um, so we do uh, 5.56 minus 4.7, and our final answer is... 0 0.86 times 10 to the negative 10 seconds or 8.6 times 10 to the negative 11. But we don't really, you know, this is a good final answer. So this is our final answer for this question. You know, this question, I liked it because it didn't have a picture. So you have to like go ahead and uh, figure that out by your own, and which is very good practice. So that's why I chose it. But once you figure this out, and again, this was not a requirement for the quiz. You could have just done this and then this is a full quiz. So if you, if you, if you have mastered this to a point where you can just do it this way, then more power to you. But please don't hesitate to just take it easy, draw the picture. I would always draw the picture um, and just, just go ahead and make sure that everything you know you're doing right and that you're actually understanding uh, the problem at hand. So this is our final answer. If you found this content useful, please make sure to uh, leave a like and I will see you guys in the next video.